Americans propaganda. You heard yeah, well, Satie you, there. You put on some Eric Satie for you. <laughs> Can we have one minute of Satie again? Just a bit of uh, subliminal propaganda in the library. You hear the propaganda. Slavoj Zizek, comrade, you will take some questions now. We have a mic there. Unfortunately, and yes, we have to pretend yeah. that we are in democracy and I'm always for a dialogue. But you know for what kind of dialogue, it's my old joke. Late Plato's dialogues, you know them. One guy talks all the time, the other guy says every 10 minutes, by Zeus, so it is. You are right, Socrates, and so on. So, yes, Excellent. I'm ready for this kind and, of dialogue. And, and the, the questions should be a little bit like the response, if I may ask that questions, in my view, last about 52 seconds. So ask them quickly, and you'll get a long answer. I will try also to... Uh, yeah. I will try my best to do... That would be my ideal, when you get an, a difficult question, this kind of a zen answers, you know, like, you ask me a complex question, what did Lacan mean by this? I say, clap with bar one hand or something like that. <laughs> Sorry, let's go on, please. Um, I was please. just wondering what you think the implications uh, ideologically are um, for the fact that in the, the Gospels, when Christ says, Eli, Eli, lama shabachthani, God, why have you yeah. forsaken me? My father, why have you forsaken me? Um, that that's actually a quotation from a psalm which starts out that way as a um, voicing despair, but ends up being a um, hymn of affirmation. I know. And that that's a, an yeah. illusion that yeah. was, would have been known to the readers at that time. I know this fact. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure what it, but the only, Think is that I don't think, you know, in the way I deal with ideology, I don't think that one should not underestimate, but also one should not overestimate, I think, the sources. Because, you know, ideological struggle is violent. You take something, you make it to a totally different mode. The, the much more crucial comparison or parallel would have been, for me, the book of Job. I repeat my point. If there is a text which deserves the title of the first critique of ideology. It's the book of Job. You know why? We know what happens there. Job thinks, look, sad for him, blah, 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 everything destroyed. Then ideology enters, the three theological friends. Read it closely. What happens there is that each of the three friends offers an ideological justification for his catastrophe. The first one, it's a rather simple one. Like, God is just so you must have done something wrong even if you do not know why. What? The second one, slightly more refined version. Something like, uh, 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 this can be some kind of a God's trial, uh, trial uh, 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 checking up how strong your faith is. So the point is that what they all try to convince Job is that his misfortunes has a meaning. And Job's protests are not about how, no, I was a good guy, I didn't, I didn't do anything wrong. He just insists that, no, I don't buy it that there is any meaning in these difficulties. And the beautiful point is that when God comes at the end, he says, you know, every word the three ideologists said is wrong. Everything that Job said is right. And uh, also, my favorite theologist, Gilbert H. Chesterton, has a wonderful reading of that famous God's response, where God says, did you know what monsters I created, this, that? Usually this is read as God's absolute arrogance, like, who are you? I created horses, this, that, whatever. I read it like Chesterton in a much more ambiguous way, that basically it's God despair. God is, God is overwhelmed by his own creation. God's message is, you complain, but look, like you complain about your mess, but look, all, all creation is one big mess and so on. Like, which is why I think it's crucial to read the death of Christ against the background of this, of uh, Job. Christ is Job radicalized. In what sense? What dies on the cross is not that's the big question. It's not uh, a representative of God. It's not 
God is there, we are here, God sends a messenger, sorry, it looks bad, he returns. It's, as Hegel put it out, it's the God of beyond himself who dies. God as the big other, in what sense? I always hated this disgusting metaphor of religion as things look bad for us, but from a larger perspective, like God sees the true context. You know, I love this. Like once, with all my Palestinian sympathies, I heard uh, Louis Farrakhan on a British radio. And he was asked, but you said uh, 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 Jewish religion is the religion of gutter, of peaks, no? And he said, no, no, this is not anti-Semitic. It sounds so because you have torn it out of context, no? <laughs> okay, I mean, yeah, yeah. I am absolutely sure that if Hitler were to be caught in the 50s, he would say, you should put my Holocaust in a proper context. <laughs> you know? So I think, you know, this disgusting metaphor, which is that of a painting, you know, you see an image from too close, you see a stain. When you see it from the proper perspective, you see that the stain contributes to the global harmony. But Christ's death means that this doesn't work. What we know today, like, isn't it obscene to say Gulag, Holocaust? It appears to us as a terrible stain, but from a proper context, it contributes, I don't know how, to divine harmony or whatever. I think that this dies with Christ. I read his death as literally the death of God. God resigns. I can no longer play that role of guaranteeing meaning. God throws himself into, as it were, his own creation. The message is, what comes after me? Holy Spirit. And you have a wonderful model of Holy Spirit. I wanted to do it, but it would take too much time. Do you know, now I appeal to your leftist memory, do you know that wonderful, simplistic, popular, old leftist American song performed by Paul Robeson or in Woodstock by Joan Baez, Joe Hill? Did you notice how it's a very Christological song? Uh, the dead organizer of Wobblies, Joe Hill, who was, uh, a murder was planted on him, he was killed, appears to an ordinary worker, that's the story of the song, and the guy says, but Joe, you, you are dead, Why, how can you be here? And then Joe Hill answers simply, uh, it takes more than a gun to kill a man, what they, the bad guys, couldn't, could never kill, it went on to organize itself. And then it's that simple message, where am I, whenever, the two of you are together to organize a strike, I am there, all that stuff, which is for me exactly the same as when Jesus says, whenever two of you love each other, and agape is for me, the only correct translation for, of agape is political love. Whenever the two of you love yourself, I am there. So it's totally wrong to look for reincarnation like some idiot there arises. No, it's here, it's already here. Reincarnation in what we are doing without any guarantee in the big other. I think the way to read it is not, we do what we can, God will help us. No, we don't have to trust God, God has to rely on us. It's kind of an open, open, open historical perspective. It's God says, it's all, it's up to you. And again, if we read it against all this, then things get interested in Christianity. This, this is how I try to read it, this materialist reading of uh, God renounces and what happens is Holy Spirit as, to put it bluntly, I wouldn't say Communist Party, but an emancipatory collective. <laughs> I think it's quite consequent reading. You don't need any, the big other is dead. There is no guarantee. So I think it's totally pagan, this reading of that somewhere up there there is God, or if some of you know theological topic, this reading that, which is why I disagree with Orthodox Russian Christianity, the main point of it is that you should distinguish divine economy, how God deals with the world, with God in itself, so that you have trinity of God up there, already existing all the time. But I think this then, you totally lose the point. If Christ is all the time with God, then then the fact that Christ came here and died means nothing. It was just a joke. The three of them were really all the time having nice time up there, and the point was you go down and fake that you are deaf so that we made a good impression on people. It was a kind of a <laughs> PR. Okay, sorry, I was too long, but I hope I made a, some kind of point. I'm not sure what. Yeah. Hey there. Uh, I noticed before you were a little dismissive about David Lynch's transcendental meditation yeah. uh, thing. 
So I was kind of curious about that, but I'd read in uh, some of your books, you talked about how you thought that kind of new age Asiatic thought had become like a prevailing ideology for Western post-industrial capitalism. But I mean, don't you think that kind of esoteric practices, I mean, a lot of people feel that, you know, esoteric meditation, yogic, spiritual disciplines are something that the West kind of lost. And that's why kind of religion ended up in a kind of sterile form, that bringing those back actually has validity. And that also, if you look at transcendental meditation, they've done studies in like, I think in a precinct in Washington, D.C., they had a set of meditators doing TM around the clock. The murder rate actually went down during that time. So it suggests that there might actually be some kind of tangible material benefit to spiritual disciplines and spiritual practices. I know know the story. I know how... uh, the standard defense, even of radical critiques of religion, like, like uh, Sam Harris, no? is that they take exception to Buddhist meditation, claiming this is not really about any superstitious thesis about supernatural beings. It's something which can be even dealt with in scientific terms. However. But, you know, uh, first, I doubt in the... Of course, you can always find some statistics, but I think I doubt if it's really about... Uh, uh, how should I put it? I doubt if the crime rate went down. I doubt first if it was really the effect of meditation as such, or if it was first some pre how should I put it, pre-selection. What type of people have chosen to do it and some other thing? Because let me tell you, okay, I will not go too much into it, but uh, with all my respect that I otherwise have for meditation, but uh, transcendental meditation and so on, I don't think it does any better in social life, helping prevent crime, whatever you want. And again, my, I always quote the same story here, Brian Victoria Zenet War, which proves how not only the entire, literally with five, six exceptions, Zen Buddhist community in Japan in the 30s and 40s supported the Japanese war effort, but they even actively justified it precisely in the terms of Zen Buddhism. For example, the name well known to all of you, if you are unfortunately as old as I am already, Daisetsu Tetaro Suzuki, the great hippie name. What people don't like to hear is that in the 30s and early 40s, he was writing different types of texts. For example, when uh, Japanese invaded China, he fully supported it, claiming the Chinese don't get it that the sword which is killing him, death is really a sword of love. More precisely, he provided uh, very precise advices how if you achieve this, the inner peace of and distance of Zen meditation, how it's much easier to kill. He takes the example of how if you remain caught into your false self, then you perceive a situation like, sorry, I'm killing you. No, that's wrong, he said. You must pretend the attitude, I float in the air and observe how my sword is moving in the air and you got stuck on my sword, how should I put it? (laughs) Don't take it personally. Thank you. Yeah, no, you, you know, and then he even went a step further. No, no, sorry, this is not Suzuki, let's be fair another priest, who developed a whole theory of how for ordinary people who don't have time to spend years meditating, total unconditional military discipline is the best way to enlightenment, overcoming your false self and so on. So even then I read another very ironic text, and uh, who, some historian, I'm very sorry, but I'm not bluffing, uh, went uh, to analyze like what effectively changed in Far East countries where Buddhism took over, where Buddhists were the kings, where, how should I put it in slightly vulgar uh, st- uh, uh, statistical terms, the average rate of killing, if anything, uh, went up, not down. So I, I, I doubt about that. But again, I'm not saying we are any better. I, I'm just totally pessimist here. I think the tragic thing to accept is that uh, uh, the authenticity of our, whatever we call it, inner enlightenment, inner truth, or inner peace, doesn't help, it's ethically neutral. And what I really appreciate in Suzuki, now let me avoid a misunderstanding. I'm not saying Suzuki pretended to be a, a, a Buddhist,